can see the little range sensor wheels covered in fine metal as well and all these sensors so a good clean will definitely improve it I'm just going to pop off the mechatronics they're all t20s taking all the bolts out and now just carefully lift the mechatronics off got to be very careful here where that strap is so you don't damage that especially if you're going to reuse it you can see all the little o-rings there where my thumb is I'll just put this aside Taking note, there are two solenoids that are the same, these two, then there's five that are the same, one, two, three, four, and this one, five, and these two are the same. So here we've got your line pressure solenoid, you've got your clutch cooling flow solenoid, shift select um, for your f number one and number three forks. You got your shift select number two and number four solenoid. You've got your clutch shift uh, multiplex solenoid, which is your odd gears, first, third, and fifth uh, pressure control. Then over here, you've got your shift cooling multiplex solenoid. Then we've got your clutch shift solenoid. Oh, clutch shift multiplex solenoid for your even gears pressure control so that one is for the even and that one is for your odd so they're opposite opposite each other and then over here you've got your clutch shift pressure control for your solenoid one which is your odd gear pressure control and your even gear pressure clutch shift pressure control Anyway, all of that doesn't really matter. When, the, when one's contaminated, usually all of them are contaminated because of the, the amount of work that's involved to get to these solenoids. You wouldn't sort of just do one, you'd do the whole lot. But the choice is yours. Every situation's different, I suppose. I wouldn't even uh, bother doing just one solenoid. You'd need to do the whole lot. Um, the mechatronic plate, over here be very careful you don't damage it that's sitting up there on on there so it's not going to wiggle around but that's very loose on that strap there and just make sure these o-rings are sealing properly might even be a good idea to replace them and these contacts as well just make sure they're not varnished or corroded or anything like that or worn and they they're just a uh, They've got like a spring-loaded tension there and they sit on those little contacts on that conductor plate or this one's a, a mechatronic plate it's got uh, the mechatronics in there as well anyway i'm going to pull these all out and uh, hopefully mix them up a little bit if i can demagnetize clean them out and test them um, Ideally, you would warm these up as well, up to about 90 degrees and test it. Sometimes these coils will fail when you put heat to them. They'll be fine at room temperature or low temperature, but when they warm right up, they fail. They get open circuit. And, of course, from those fault codes that we had, we were getting uh, solenoids that were a bit sticky as well. So I'd say the coils have been contaminated and that weakens the magnetic field of the plungers. Another thing to note, if, uh, if these are just contaminated with metal, not so bad. But if you find little bits of plastic everywhere, um, the little retainer clips for the springs in the, the wet clutches have basically all broken. And this, if you did a repair on... Well, if you did all this and there was heaps of plastic in there, uh, the repair would be, wouldn't be would last very long, very short-lived. So my recommendation in that situation would be to take the transmission out 
and replace those little retainers in the in the clutches but this one just looks like it's contaminated with fine metal uh, hasn't done a lot of K's as well so just probably a lack of service um, it is a, a second transmission they've put in here so probably a good idea to uh, flush your heat exchanger out as well there could have been a lot of muck left in there from the previous transmission which is added to this problem that we're having now. Now these bits here, they're actually Torx Plus. Uh, TP Torx Plus S15. You know, I don't have uh, Torx Plus that long, especially to reach these ones right down the bottom here. So I've only got these Torx ones. So just bear in mind that you won't be able to get a socket in there especially in those ones down there and be very careful when you're undoing them otherwise you, yeah, you won't be able to get them out if you wreck it you'll have to get a whole valve body now I've already loosened these so don't just just willy-nilly with the tech gun grab a tech gun and try and undo them and there you go these two solenoids are the same and these two you can see they're pretty contaminated as well and it might be a nice idea to just if I had some extra ones, I'd probably pull these apart just to show you what's inside. Now I'm just going to measure the resistance at room temperature, which is about 13 degrees today. And they should all be around 3 ohms. 3.3, 3.2. Three two three two three two They're all about the same. Three two, so they all look okay. So they're more than likely just contaminated. Start off with these two. You can see our wash tray is nice and clean. I'll just give them before I demagnetize them. I'll just give them a bit of a clean, bit so I don't get them demagnetized. They're all oily, or less oily. You can see. We've got magnets, neodymium magnets under our wash tray there. You can see they already have collected just that stuff that's on the outside. So imagine what's on the inside. Got our mag demagnetizer and that only operates when the button's on there. I'll just put this over the top of it just so it doesn't get everything oily. And I'm just demagnetizing the solenoid as much as I can. Because what actually happens, that fine metal gets magnetized. The solenoid usually is only magnetized when there's power to it. But the problem is, is that fine metal, which is really like, like grease, you can see it on my fingers as well. And that gets magnetized and then you can't get it out or it can't flush itself out. All right. Sorry young lady, I'm 
getting your face all dirty. Now I reckon there's probably more more mucks coming out of there and that's even before I've blown anything out or anything like that. Looks like there's even some larger bits coming out of it now. And see how much extra muck's coming out of there. Now you may need to do it a few times just to get as much out as you can. I'll just keep doing that until it stops coming out. Okay, I've washed them thoroughly. Set our voltage supply to 8.4 volts. And you can see that's working quite well. That's most of the muck that have just come out of these two, two solenoids. Got the other one on there. You can see that plunger is sort of taking a little bit long to return. Now, where those solenoids work, you're just pushing these valves anyway, so there's spring, spring tension opposed to the solenoid. Uh, voltage pressure and that should be okay these are just on off solenoids that just push that valve so if you decide to, to wash them again um, because we've tested them with uh, power like that it's a good idea to demagnetize again you'll just get more muck coming out of it that's all and that one is the clutch shift pressure control for the odd gears and that one's for the even gears so you can see there's just a little spring there it just pushes it across it's a good idea to take the valves out and just see if there are any wear marks on it uh, but they look okay now for this one and that one's the clutch shift multiplex solenoid the even gear pressure control and you can see I've cleaned the tray nicely again before I start on it. I'll give it a wash, then demagnetize it, and we'll see how much muck comes out of this one. So all nice and clean, and that's what came out of just this one on its own. So ideally, it would be a good idea to pressure test these, but today we're just cleaning them out. I'm going to go through and just flush all these the same way and then we can put it back together. Now I've gone through that last lot of solenoids and you can see how much that's from the last four that were there. Um, the one that, the fifth one's on the opposite side, but that came out of all those four. And because there's that much muck in there, I thought it might be a good idea to pop the valve body apart and just to make sure there's no muck in the valve body channels in the worm channels there. Uh, the separator plate will stick on that other half so when you get this one off it's important because there are little balls on this side 
but this side's okay. There's nothing really there. And it looks pretty clean actually. That's a good indicator that the those plastic clips in the in the clutches haven't disintegrated. And there we've got the other half. And I've just taken the two little bolts out. They're T20s, I think. Where is it? T20. And you'll notice that there are little check balls and valves underneath this plate. So be very careful when you pull that out, especially if you don't have a shop manual. Very carefully, just work that gasket, especially if it's stuck on there. There we go. You can see the little plastic balls there. Sometimes they do wear down, they're, they're quite small. You'll notice that they wear down. But apart from that, it looks pretty clean actually. So you've got a little valve here, you've got ball and spring there. A little bit of muck there, but it looks like it's not too bad. If those plastic clips are worn, you'll find a really, really fine plastic right through the whole valve body. So we'll just put this one back together, and Bob's your uncle. We can put it all back in the vehicle. All back together. Just make sure you don't bend these little uh, contact, pressure contact points down too much, and if you do, just straighten them out. It's also a good idea to just, because we've been working on them, just to give them another... Uh, ohms test just check the resistance is still there and now I've got the the range sensor and the mechatronic unit I'm just going to give that a flush as well you can see there's quite a bit of metal on that cleaned it all off nicely and blown it out the only way to get because that's magnetic the only way to clean it's really with a rag so you've got to be very very careful you don't damage anything because it is pretty loose and what I've been meaning to do is make a little bracket that goes from here to there so while I'm working on on these things um, there's no chance of that getting damaged make sure your o-rings are there just like I said check that these are all sort of slightly bent up don't go too crazy with it and now we just carefully Put the mechatronics unit back on. All the bolts are the same except for this one. There's one longer one over here. Well, body all back together. And just uh, that pin or the bolt that goes through here, um, what we need to do is align this hole here. And there's a little hole right there. You can see that. Now what I do, I have this little tool, it's actually 532 bolt and I've machined the tip of it down to, uh, what is it, about 3 mil or 130 thou and you'll find that that just sits in there nice and snugly. A little bit loose here but I think in the shop manual they, they recommend 120 thou. This is actually 156 thou. So it's a lot, lot snugger there. And the idea that we're doing is where we have to line, uh, when the selector on the transmission is in drive, we need to align these teeth here. So what you do is you just put that little pin in there and just rotate that wheel around until you'll feel it step in and that's locked, you can see that. And that now is ready to go back in the transmission.